in today's discussion we are going to do some numericals and the questions on dimensional analysis these will be the questions uh, which are based on the uses of dimensional analysis its applications to the different types of problem let's suppose we want to find the dimensions of angle electric density coefficient of viscosity electric potential resistance or coefficient of viscosity so let's try to see how we get the dimension of these quantities so uh, we will be using either the definition or the formula in which these terms appear to find their dimensions now angle this is the ratio of length of arc to the radius of the circle so it is the arc length by radius so if you take its dimension it will be your l by l this is dimensionless quantity so it is your m0 l0 t0 that means it is dimensionless dimensionless let's we'll take the second term it is the relative density relative density is the ratio of the density of the material to the density of water at 4 degrees celsius so it is ratio of density of material by density of water at 4 degrees celsius so again as it is the density term it is mass per unit volume so it is your ml t power minus 3 this is also the same so it will be once again m0 l0 t0 or it is dimensionless next coefficient of viscosity this is represented by eta and this appears in the formula f equals to eta av by x f is force of viscosity this is your a which is the area this is the velocity this is the separation in fact it is the velocity gradient if i take v by x so from this we can get eta as fx by av so if you take this one this will be fx by av and if you take its dimension we take it in this way now force ml t minus 2 this is the length term so it is l area l square and velocity l t minus 1 so this will give you m and now it is your l square will get cancelled l minus 1 again t it is t to the power minus 1 so this is the dimension of coefficient of viscosity this is also very important uh, in the beginning when you are starting uh, the topics there you may find that it is a new term there but by the time you will appear in the final exam or other you will definitely get acquainted with this chapter so you must uh, see this one how you find the dimension because you will be doing the formula that time now it is your electric potential this is work done in moving a unit positive charge from infinity to given point so basically it is work done per unit positive test charge so this will be work done by charge so if you take its dimension work done is your force into displacement so it is m l d minus 2 into l charge charge we can take current into time now since current is taken as the fundamental uh, quantity there so we take charge expressed in terms of current 
so it is a into t. So this is your m l square p minus 2 divided by a t. Ultimately, it will be your m l square t power minus 3 a power minus 1. So this is the dimension of electric potential. Okay. Next is your resistance. Resistance term will come in the Ohm's law formula V equals to Ri. So if you use this one, then it is your V by R. And potential term we have already derived its dimension. This is your M L square T power minus 3 A power minus 1. And if you now divide it by the current, that means it is your A. So it is your M L square T power minus 3 A power minus 2. This will be the dimension of resistance. Similarly, suppose it is asked to find uh, the dimension of Young's modulus of elasticity. Young's modulus of elasticity we represent by capital gamma. And this one appears in the formula. If you take longitudinal stress by longitudinal strength. Now, longitudinal stress will be force per unit area of cross section. So, this is your F by A. And the strength, longitudinal strength, if you take, it is the change in length per unit original length. So, this is your small L by capital L. If you take its dimension, now denominator term, as it is your length by L, it will be dimensionless. But the term in the numerator will have dimension force MLT minus 2 or L square. Then for strength it is L by L. So ultimately this will be just M L minus 1 T minus 2. This will be the dimension of Young's modulus of elasticity. Remember as the strength is dimensionless, a stress will also have the same dimension as that of the Young's modulus. Force per unit area is also pressure. So pressure will also have the same dimension as that of Young's modulus. A stress is also having the same dimension. So this is how you can find dimension of different physical quantities. If you know their formula, if you know their definition, you can easily get the expression. This is the second question. You have to find a uh, value of surface tension of water in SI unit. It is given that surface tension of water is 72 dyne per centimeter in CGS system. What is its value in SI system? Okay. So, we will be using the formula N1 U1 equals to N2 U2 for finding it. N1 and N2 will be the numerical value. U1 and U2 will be the units in the different given systems there. And this is the unit for which physical quantity? It is surface tension. So, first of all, let's take what is the dimension of surface tension? Force per unit length there. Acting tangentially to the free surface of the liquid. Suppose you do not know this one, but you can see in the unit, it is dying per centimeter. As it is dying per centimeter, obviously, it has the physical quantity, which is force divided by length term. So, here, it will be your M L T minus 2 by L. So, it is your M L 0 T power minus 2. This is the dimension of surface tension. So, let us assume that 72 dyne per centimeter value is equals to N Newton per meter. That is value in SI unit. So, what we can write here? 72 M L 0 T minus 2 in CGS. This is equals to N 
एम एल जीरो पी माइनस टू इन एस आई विल जस्ट राइट द करस्पॉन्डिंग यूनिट ऑफ दीज बेस क्वांटिटीज सो दिस विल बी योर सेवेंटी टू इट इज काम इट इज लेंस टर्म इज नॉट देयर और सेकेंड स्क्वायर दिस इज योर एम इट इज के जी और सेकेंड स्क्वायर सेवेंटी टू इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस थ्री इट मीन्स सेवेंटी टू टाइम पर सेंटीमीटर इन एस आई यूनिट विल हैव द वैल्यू सेवेंटी टू इंटू टेन टू द पावर माइनस थ्री न्यूटन पर मीटर टेकिंग फोर्स वेलॉसिटी एंड टाइम एज बेस यूनिट्स फाइंड डायमेंशन ऑफ मास एंड एनर्जी so far what we have done we have taken physical quantities dimensions in terms of the base units like mass length and time or if it is their current or temperature here different uh, physical quantities have been given which should be taken as the base units and you have to find the dimension of say mass energy or any other term there here many try such type of problem by heat and trial method that means the base units which are given they will just multiply divide or take the square or whichever convenient way they use them to get these base units but i will suggest that don't use those heat and trial method use a scientific method or which will is more systematic and that will give you result whether the question is simple or it is complex so let's see how we attempt that one this is basically this will be uh, one more application of the dimension where we want to find relation of the different physical quantities which are likely to be involved to represent a physical quant given physical quantity so we assume that let m that is the mass whose dimension we want to find f power a p power b and p power c the base units which are given will take their power size a b c so if you combine it as your m proportional to f power a p power b p power c or m will be k times f a p b p c and this k is dimensionless constant it is dimension of m so now we'll compare the powers of m l and t from both sides equals to 1 if i compare the power of m similarly if you compare power of l it is a plus b which is 0 so b will be equals to minus a a value we have got as 1 so it is minus 1 so value of b is minus 1 if you take this term t power so f power 1 g power minus 1 and t power 1 so this is your k f t by t this is your m let's take the second part energy is proportional to a power a b power b t power c so this e will be proportional to this so again if you equate the powers of uh, m l and t from both sides so equating powers a is equals to 1 now a plus b is equals to 2 
So A is 1. So B is also 1. Okay. Now for C term, we can use minus 2A minus B plus C equals to minus 2. So if you substitute, it will be how much? Minus 2, A over is 1. This is 1 plus C equals to minus 2. This is your minus 3. So this C will be equals to minus 2 plus 3. That is also. So all the terms like A, B, C all are 1. So in that case, E will be equals to K F power 1. V power 1 and T power 1. So this is your expression. This is the next question. Here you have to check the dimensional correctness of the formulas like SNF equals to U plus A by 2, 2 and minus 1 or M equals to M naught by root over V square minus C square where the terms have usual representation. If you look at this formula, SNF is your u plus a by 2, 2 and minus 1. You know that this SNF represents distance traveled in nth second. u is initial velocity, a is acceleration and n is the number of seconds. So for this type of problem, if we take the dimension of left hand side, this is distance traveled traveled in nth second. That means this is the distance traveled in one particular second. If it is the distance traveled in one particular second, so it will have the dimension as that of speed L by T or this is your L T power minus 1. Now let's take the dimension of right hand side. This is your u plus a by 2, 2 and minus 1 dimension. So it is dimension of u, a by 2 dimension, 2 and minus 1 dimension. u is initial velocity, so its dimension will be l t power minus 1. This is your acceleration term. So dimension of acceleration is l t power minus 2. 2 is the dimensionless quantity. On the right hand side, we have the term of time, 2n minus 1, that means it is the nth second or n is the second there. So that means this is also time, this is one is also time. So this is your t. So this is your lt minus 1, lt minus 1 and that will be written as your lt minus 1 because 2 is dimensionless quantity. It is not written 2 times lt minus 1 because 2 is dimensionless as 2 is dimensionless. So what we find dimension of left hand side is same as dimension of right hand side. So formula is dimensionally correct. We have checked dimensional correctness. So our final concluding remarks will be that formula is dimensionally correct. Because there may be many formulas there which is dimensionally correct, but it may not be correct formula. Of course, this is a correct formula. Do remember, all correct formulas will be dimensionally correct also. But all dimensionally correct formula may not be a correct formula. M0 is the rest mass of a body. M is its mass at uh, velocity v. C is the speed of light. So let's see that uh, whether it is dimensionally correct or not. Left hand side is the mass term. So dimension is M. Right hand side term if you take. This is your M0 by root over v square minus c square term. So numerator will have the dimension m, denominator is L square t minus 2 term square root because both will have the same 
dimension L V square and C square and subtracting that will also not get it cancelled because we are not um, numerically adding or subtracting. So here this will be M by L T minus 1. So now you see it is M L minus 1 T. So dimension of left hand side is not equal to that of right hand side. So formula is dimensionally wrong. Or it is incorrect. Let's take another type of question. Here you have to find dimensions of A and B in this formula. P plus A by V square into V minus B equals to RT. This is the Van der Waal gas equation. Here P is pressure, V is volume, R is gas constant, T is temperature in absolute scale. E and B are the constants whose dimension we want to find. If you go by the traditional method, how we find the dimension of a physical quantity in, from a given formula? We take that physical quantity on one side of equality, transfer all the terms on the other side, then we take the dimension of the terms on right side to get the dimension of the term on left side. But here, if you use that traditional method, what will happen? If you take A on one side and transfer all the terms on right side, then you will have B term on the right hand side. Dimension of B we do not know. So we will not be able to get the dimension of A. Similarly, if you put B on one side and transfer all the terms on right side, then right side will contain term A whose dimension we do not know. So here, the traditional way of solving this type of problem or finding the dimension will not help you. Here we use the principle of dimensional homogeneity. So principle of dimensional homogeneity is that the terms which are added or subtracted in a given correct formula must have same dimension. So using that principle of dimensional homogeneity, we can say as P is added to A by V square, so dimension of P must be same as A by V square. Because it is being added together, so dimension of A will be dimension of P into V square dimension. P is pressure, so it is force per unit area. And this is the volume, so it is your L cube of the square. So this will be your M and power of L now it will be 6 and here 4, so it is your L power 5, T power minus 2. So M, L power 5, T power minus 2, this is the dimension of A. Similarly, if you want to find dimension of B, so what will happen? Dimension of B should be same as that of V. And dimension of V is how much? L cube. So this is the dimension of B. This is the dimension of A. So this is how we find dimension of A and B using principle of dimensional homogeneity. Okay, this is another question. Here, you have to find dimension of omega and k in the formula y equals to a sin omega t minus kx where x and y they are in meter and t is in second. That means indirectly they are saying that x and y they are the length terms and t is time term. So here again if you take this one Obviously, the traditional method will not help you to get the dimensions of omega and k. But if you use principle of dimensional homogeneity, we can say that omega t, as it is being subtracted kx from this, so both must have the same dimension. So omega t must have same dimension as that of kx. But we do not know uh, that the uh, what is the dimension of this quantity? So again, 
here you can take as it is a sine function sine omega t minus kx so obviously this omega t minus kx must be coming in place of angle this is the angle term and angle is a dimensionless quantity so this one will be equal to m0 l0 t0 or that is 1 so now if you use this omega t dimension is 1 so omega dimension will be equals to 1 by t dimension it is t power minus 1 or if it is your kx term dimension equal to 1 so dimension of k will be 1 by so this is L power minus 1. So this is how you can get the dimensions of omega and k. This is the another question. If x and a stands for distance, check dimensional correctness of this formula. This is the integral of dx by root over a square minus x square equals to 1 by a sine inverse a by x. So let's take the dimensional correctness of this. It is given that uh, x and a they stands for distance. So on left hand side on the numerator, we have the term. If you take left hand side dimension, this is the term of length. If you take uh, dx by root over a square minus x square terms integral dimension. So on left hand or uh, numerator, it is your length term. In the denominator, it is a square root of L square minus L square. That is your basically L by L because again, it will be giving you L square only dimensionally. So it is a square root of L square that is L. So it is your one. One means it is your M0 L0 T0. It is dimensionless. On right hand side, if you take this is 1 by a sine inverse a by x. So we have to take the dimension of this term. This term 1 by a will have the dimension as 1 by l. On this side sine inverse a by x trigonometrical functions inverse functions they all are dimensionless so obviously this term will be dimensionless it is dimensionless so what we get on right hand side l power minus 1 now if you compare dimension of left hand side and right hand side they are not equal so this formula is dimensionally incorrect so this is how you can check the dimensional correctness of even the mathematical formula but remember that you can use it to check the dimensional correctness but you cannot use dimensional method to derive mathematical relations because all those mathematical relations are dimensionless whether it is your algebraic function trigonometrical function exponential function you cannot use it to derive the formula okay but you can very well uh, check whether it is dimensionally correct or not if the terms are representing particular specific physical quantities so these are some of the numericals based on the applications of the dimensional formulas there or uses of dimensional analysis.